In this uh, segment, we'll talk about counter current mechanism. Amongst various organisms, mammals and birds, they are capable of excreting hypertonic urine. Mammals including humans, including us, that is humans and birds, they are capable of excreting hypertonic urine. Excrete hypertonic urine. And the mechanism which helps us make this urine hypertonic and excrete it is counter current mechanism. There are two places where this counter current mechanism works. So first place where this counter current mechanism works is vasa recti. Now what exactly we mean by counter? Counter is when something is moving in the opposite direction and current is for the flow. So when there, are, there is a liquid which is flowing in the two arms of a tube in opposite direction, then that flow would be considered or called counter current. So vasa recti. Now let us draw only a part of loop of Henry. Say this is the cortex and this part is medulla. And we know that loop of Henle is in the medullary region. So this is the limb which is going down, that is descending limb. And it takes a U-turn here, it makes a loop and it goes up which is slightly wider, that is the ascending limb. And we are not talking about all that detailed structure, but we would draw it because we want to draw the peritubular capillaries. So here is this Bowman's capsule and the efferent arteriole, the efferent arteriole which emerges from here from this glomerulus, this efferent arteriole when it comes down from cortex to the medullary region, it makes loops around the tube. Now we are not talking about PCT, let us come to straight away the loop which it makes here. So now let us bring this capillary down and it goes from the back side of this, lip. let us label this. This is descending lip and this one is ascending lip. So now when this capillary it comes from the back side and makes a loop turns here and goes like this. So coming from the back side of the descending lip and going from front of it. So basically there is a loop here. One loop, one arm. Here the blood is flowing towards the lower side and here the blood flows towards the upper side. So this is how this loop is formed. That means there are two parts of this capillary. One which is bringing the, because it is the blood which is flowing. One which is bringing the blood downwards and other is going to take the blood upwards. In this case, we call it one arm of the loop of vasa recta is bringing the blood towards medullary region and the other arm is going to take it towards cortex. That means the fluid or blood here is flowing in the two arms very close to each other in opposite direction and that is counter current. Flow of liquid, that is something is moving, that is current. And because in both these arms, the direction of the flow is opposite, we call it counter current mechanism. Now what happens when the blood is flowing like this? When blood comes from the cortex region into the medullary region, that means when it is coming low, on the lower side, sodium and chloride ions, they diffuse into the arm. 
from this tissue, this interstitial tissue, which is in the medullary region, sodium ions and chloride. Sodium ions, which are here, chloride ions, they are taken in, they diffuse from the interstitial fluid to the blood. So from all over the side, they are going into the blood. If we draw the same thing here and represent, so the sodium ions from interstitial fluid and chloride ions are going into the blood. In the arm, which is taking the blood from cortical region into deeper region, that is into the medullary region. Now, the sodium ions and chloride ions are in the fluid. They have moved in, so they are here. When the blood moves back up, that is it is going towards medulla, these sodium ions and chloride ions are again sent out. So, sodium ions are going to come out, chloride ions are also going to diffuse out. So, basically what is happening is in one arm of the loop, sodium and chloride ions are going in and from the other arm of the same loop, sodium and chloride ions are coming out into the interstitial fluid. So basically, the interstitial fluid, which was having more and more sodium and chloride ions, by diffusion, these ions went into the capillary, the loop, which is going down. And when the blood goes back into the cortex, these ions come out. So basically, they remain in the med this medullary region. So the purpose of this counter movement is to hold all these ions in the medullary region. Why should this movement take place? Why can't just the ions remain here? Suppose we take a situation. Say there are many, many sodium ions which are in the medullary region. We know that these solute particles, these ions are going to diffuse from higher concentration to lower. So they would diffuse from medulla to cortex. We want all these ions to remain in the medullary region. And that is why there is this cyclic movement of ions taking place. So if this is the loop, sodium ions go in, when the blood comes out, the sodium ions come out. So they remain in the interstitial fluid. Now because of this, what is happening is, there is higher concentration of sodium and chloride ions in the medullary region. Higher concentration of sodium ions, chloride ions in the medullary region and when this concentration is maintained the outer medium becomes hypertonic why all these things are being done because the urine which is to be excreted should be hypertonic so that more and more water can be taken in so one counter current works in the vasa recti that is the capillaries which are around the loop of Henry and the basic purpose of this is there is a loop which is formed one arm which is bringing the blood deeper into the deeper medullary region the other arm of the loop is taking to the upper medullary region from the arm which is going down that is the descending arm the sodium ions chloride ions go in that means they become the part of the blood now when this blood moves back up, these sodium and chloride ions, they come out. So basically, where are these sodium chloride ions? They are in the interstitial fluid. This is one place where this counter current mechanism is working. The second place where this counter current mechanism works is the loop of Henle. Now, in the loop of Henle, there are two arms in which the fluid is flowing in the opposite direction. Here the fluid is going down and here the fluid is coming up. So counter current means two arms of a loop very close to each other in which the liquid flows in the opposite direction. Now what happens here? We have seen that the descending limb is permeable to water but Sodium and chloride ions cannot come out of this. 
whereas the ascending lip is permeable to sodium ions and chloride ions. So here there is a higher concentration. Some sodium and chloride ions, they passively diffuse. So here is one sodium ion, it diffuses into the descending limb. Descending limb is impervious for sodium ions to come out. Chloride ions also diffuse it. Again, same thing. One arm which is going down takes in sodium and chloride ions. So, sodium and chloride ions become a part of this filtrate. When the filtrate goes up, the sodium and chloride ions are coming out. So, by both these processes, sodium and chloride ions are retained inside the medulla only. And because of this, this is the medulla and cortex that we have drawn. There is a concentration gradient which has developed. At the upper part, the concentration is 300 mosmol per kg. And in the deeper part of the medulla, somewhere here at the bottom, it is 1200 mosmol per kg. This unit tells us the concentration of solute in 1 kilogram of solvent. And that is known as osmolality. So here there is a lower concentration and here there is more concentration. So there is a gradient. And that is why longer the loop of Henle, it would go into the region where the concentration is higher. Water moves from hypotonic to hyper. This tube, that is the descending limb, it is permeable to water. So when outer medium becomes hypertonic due to presence of all these sodium and chloride ions. Water is going to diffuse out of this loop and if more and more water is taken out of the filtrate, the urine which is going to be excreted out is going to be hypertonic. So counter current mechanism works so that the organisms are able to excrete hyper, very concentrated urine. And there are two places where this countercurrent, that cyclic movement of iron is taking place. One is vasa recti. One arm of the loop takes the iron. The other arm releases the iron. Here also, one arm takes the iron passively. This arm releases the iron. That means all the ions, they remain in the interstitial fluid, that is medullary region. And this results in formation of a concentration gradient. Deeper in the medullary region, there is more concentration. So outer medium, that is interstitial fluid, becomes hypertonic as compared to the filtrate which is in the tube. And from hypo, that is filtrate, to hyper, that is interstitial fluid water is going to come out. So urine can become more and more concentrated or hypertonic. Now the extension of this is, suppose we are talking of collecting that. So let us extend this a little bit. Say this is DCT and this is the collecting duct. I'm just making it here so that in the same diagram we are able to understand everything. This is collecting duct. The collecting duct is receiving different nephrons. Various nephrons, they pour the filtrate here. Again, as the collecting duct goes deeper into the medullary region, the outer side is hypertonic. Inner medium is hypo. And why is this hyper? Because in the medullary region, there are sodium ions, there are chloride ions, so it is more concentrated. And collecting duct is also under the control of ADH, antidiuretic hormone. So more and more water can be absorbed from the collecting duct. One more thing which is taking place here is urea also diffuses out of the collecting duct. That means there are three solutes which are responsible for maintaining this 
concentration gradient or osmolality and these are three solutes responsible for maintaining osmolality that is this concentration difference are sodium ions chloride ions and urea and now you remember why urea was a low threshold substance because some amount of urea is required in our body to maintain this concentration gradient or osmolality so counter current mechanism is a very simple mechanism there has to be a tube in the form of a loop and in the two arms of the loop the liquid would be flowing in opposite direction and that is counter current and this counter current helps in maintaining higher ion concentration in the medullary region two places where this takes place one is vasa recti and other is the loop of henle because of the, this these two counter currents human beings other mammals and birds are able to excrete hypertonic urine